Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's George Agenbar and I'm a UK music producer. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at problem frequencies, characteristics and overall how to EQ electric piano. The five characteristics we're going to be looking at today are boominess, muddiness, presence, clarity and attack. So if this is something you want to learn a bit more about, then make sure you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kiss me in the rain. Just before we begin, I thought we should talk a bit about the difference between an acoustic and electric piano and how they produce sounds, as this will affect the way that we EQ them. An acoustic piano produces sound by when you hit the key, a little hammer strikes a string which produces the note. However, an electric piano, when you press the key, plays a piano sample. So they both work slightly differently. With an acoustic piano, you also have to bear in mind that there'll be a lot more variance in tonal characteristics between each make of piano and also mic placement and room noise and all that goodness too. With both acoustic and electric, a player's touch, which is the way in which they play the piano, is also really important and could affect the way that we EQ the piano. And so all this in mind, just remember that these frequency ranges that I give throughout the video are a rough guideline, they're not a rule of thumb. The first problem characteristic we're going to have a look at is boominess. Now, this is very common and tends to happen between 100 and 250 hertz. We get this a lot when we're playing the very, very low notes in the piano. So for this example, I'm going to play a set of piano chords once normally, and then I'm going to play them with a really heavy left hand using really low bass notes to see if we can create and highlight that boominess. As you can see in the graph, there definitely is an increase in frequencies around the 100 to 250 hertz range, and even in the muddy frequencies, which we're going to have a look at next. Okay, so now I've put a simple EQ cut around the 100 to 250 hertz range, and let's hear how that's made a difference in the boomy piano example. So you can hear by taking out those really low frequencies, we've made the piano sound a lot less boomy. The next characteristic we're going to have a look at is muddiness. Now this happens around the 250 to 500 hertz range. And if you have a build up of frequencies in this area, it can really overpower a mix and just make it sound not the most pleasant. So it's something that we really do have to watch out for. In this example, I'm still going to keep my bass notes relatively low down to still get a bit of that boominess, but I'm going to try and keep quite a busy bass line too to really try and highlight that muddy frequency. In the graphs we can definitely, definitely see an increase in the 250 to 500 hertz range, which is where these muddy frequencies lie. So to solve this problem, I've taken out a few of the frequencies around the 300 hertz range. Let's hear what that's done.
and taking out that 250 to 500 hertz range has really cleared it up. The next characteristic is presence. Now, this can be really hard to describe. The best way I've found to think about it is it's what makes the instrument sound like it's at the very front of the mix. What makes the instrument sound like it's the main thing. And this happens between the 2 to 5 kilohertz range. So for this example, I'm going to play really heavily in the mid-range of the piano. But I'm also going to put a vocal line over these chords. And then we can see which instrument really stands out and sounds like the main thing. But just don't go and fall in love Cause he'll never be enough He'll break you time and time again So, listening to that example, you can really hear the piano and vocals are battling each other. Neither one really sounds like it's the main thing or something you should really concentrate on. Let's take out the 2 to 5 kilohertz range in the piano and see whether that sets the piano back in the mix and makes the vocal sound like it's the main attraction. But just don't go and fall in love cause he'll never be enough He'll break you time and time again But just don't go and fall in love cause he'll never be enough He'll break you time and time As you can hear, the piano sounds further back in the mix, even though the volume of it hasn't been touched. It's now complementing and enhancing the vocal line instead of the opposite because we've reduced its presence. The fourth characteristic is clarity. And now, when I say clarity, you may think, well, George, I'm just going to take out those muddy frequencies in the lower range that you mentioned earlier. Surely that will make my piano sound a bit more clear. Well, it would make your mix sound clearer. However, the actual piano sound may still be a bit muffled. So to solve this and make it sound a bit clearer, you could introduce a little boost around the six to eight kilohertz area to make the piano really stand out and sparkle. So in this example, I am going to keep in the vocal track that I had in the last example. And then we're going to boost the six to eight kilohertz range to see whether that sounds a bit clearer. But just don't go and fall in love Cause he'll never be enough He'll break you time and time again But just don't go and fall in love Cause he'll never be enough He'll break you time and time again That piano sounded a lot clearer with the frequency boost. It may have been a little overpowering for just two tracks, but in a whole mix, this can work a treat. The final characteristic is attack. Now you mainly get attack in a recording from the performance, and ideally you want to get the best possible recording you can. But that's not always the case. So sometimes we need to use EQ to introduce some attack and we get this from the 10 to 12 kilohertz range. In the graphs we can certainly see an increase in higher frequencies. So let's use EQ to boost the high end of the track with no attack. And you can hear that this added a lot more attack to the piano track. So that's how to EQ an electric piano. As I said at the beginning, these are all rough guidelines, it's not set in stone. But if you are having these problems, just look around the general areas that I've stated. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I will see you again soon.